Hi, I'm Chris. I'm here at the Experimental Greenhouse at Crop King in Lodi, Ohio, to talk about hydroponics and not just hydroponics. We've covered the process of hydroponics in previous episodes, but I want to talk to you now about what can you grow hydroponically. That means what can we grow with just water, nutrients, and the absence of dirt? And the answer is going to be almost anything. So we're in the lettuce house right now, but there's so much going on here in addition to lettuce, including the varieties of lettuce. We have iceberg, romaine. We talked about the desktop NFT system, and that's what we're using here. Not the desktop, but the NFT or nutrient film technique. And from seed to harvest, we're talking six weeks. Let's talk about some other things in addition to lettuce that we can grow hydroponically. All right, so we're here at the Crop King Tomato House. Obviously, one of the things that are the predominant crop in here is tomatoes. These um, are vine crops, as are most of the crops that we'll be looking at today. And you'll see that they are supported with these, these twine um, to, to kind of make sure that the, they don't snap or break under the weight of the, bearing, the fruit that they're bearing. But they grow so well in here. It's a controlled environment. It is a little bright, hence the sunglasses. I'm not trying to be too cool here for the video, but I am trying to make sure I'm not looking at you squinting the whole time. But tomatoes are a huge crop here at Crop King. They're beautiful. It's, everything is just uh, absolutely gorgeous. And you see coming up behind me, uh, my sidekick, Jimmy here. Hi, Jimmy. Just seeing what you're doing. Oh, well, we're talking about all the cool things that we grow here in the, in the tomato house. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I just walked back through there. Yeah, why don't you go head back there and see. Uh, I thought I heard something fall over there. I, you check I it out? I have time to hang out for a little bit. Oh, well, see what happened over there. I'll, we'll be right by. Sure? Yeah, sure. All right, friends, so we're gonna take a walk down this aisle here, taking a look at some of the other crops other than tomatoes that we grow here at Crop King. If you thought that you could not grow melons hydroponically, you are wrong. We have this gorgeous vine of uh, what looks to be cantaloupe. I'm not sure the exact variety. Man, do they produce, look at this. This is straight off of this vine. I can't figure out how to tell if a melon's ripe or not. So viewers, if you have a tip or trick to, you gotta look for to determine if a melon is ripe other than just cutting it open, well, we'd love to hear from you. Thump on it. Thump on it. So we've talked about tomatoes. We've talked about melons. We're gonna go down a little bit farther to get into some other uh, produce that we're growing here. And we're also gonna talk about the manner in which we grow these. We talked about the lettuce and the nutrient film technique that they use but these vining crops use a little bit different technique. Same principle, we're using water and nutrients to grow, but it's just a little bit different as far as how we grow them. We're continuing our tour of the Crop King Tomato House just to explore all the different kind of vine crops we can grow here hydroponically. And I wanna talk a little bit about the system that we use. So NFT systems are great for your leafy vegetables, herbs, things like that. But over here, we use what's called a Beto bucket, or you may have heard it as a Dutch bucket system to grow our crops. That's the system that we use to grow our vine crops versus the NFT system that is used for a lot of our leafy crops and herbs and things like that. The big difference is just the growing medium that the plants are, are, um, are, are in. So with these vine crops, we wanna give it enough room to get a nice big root, and that's gonna take place inside this bucket that is filled with the growing medium perlite. So perlite, basically there's no nutrients in perlite whatsoever. It's just basically uh, the medium that we use to allow the plants to root and become stable. But plants here get so big that we still have to use a support string to hold them up. So the way this works, we know our NFT system, our nutrient film technique pumps water in. It runs a, a small stream down the middle of the channel that the roots sit down in and it pulls out the nutrients. With the Beto system, we pump water in using these drip spikes. The water then will be recirculated as it comes down out of this channel, back into our recirculation pump, and it comes back through again. So we don't waste any water here in this system, but you can see what we can produce using the Beto system. These cucumbers are absolutely enormous. Not only the, the fruit itself, and hopefully you can take a look at this one here that's not too far off, but just the height of the plant alone. So I'm 5'10", reaching up to the tips of my fingers, and still I'm probably, I guess, two and a half, three feet away from the top of this plant. We've talked about growing in a controlled environment, such as the tomato house here at Crop King. Uh, we can control the amount of water, the amount of nutrients, um, and the temperature to a certain degree. 
uh, which is great. By being indoors, we can grow you know, almost year round, really extend our growing season. But one question that comes up is, well, how do you pollinate your plants? That's a great question. Now, as a, uh, uh, an educator, I have a hydroponics farm in my school. And unfortunately, my superintendent won't let me have bees um, in the cafeteria where our garden is located. Why not? Well, Jim, it's just a safety concern. I do believe it's probably the best decision. Uh, but here at Crop King, we solve this by these little natural pollinators right here. They're bumblebees, um, pretty, uh, pretty tame. Uh, they fly around the greenhouse here. They pretty much leave you alone. But because I'm not allowed to have bees, I still need a way to pollinate my plants indoors. And that's where this little tool comes in. This is called the Veggie Bee. And hopefully this will pick up on our mic. It basically vibrates. And all I would do here is I would touch this to the flower um, of my plant and this will help pollinate it. So essentially we're getting the, um, by vibrating, we're just disturbing the plant enough to jostle loose that pollen, uh, to get it onto the, uh, the plant that needs to pollinate. And uh, by golly, we're gonna have fruit here before long. Prior to this, I use an electric toothbrush uh, because again, it's the vibration that's gonna jostle loose that pollen and, and get our fruit growing. So this is important because if you're growing tomatoes and you do not self-pollinate them, you're just gonna have some pretty little tomato flowers and no fruit. So you gotta go the extra step and pollinate those and you'll appreciate the fact whether you're indoors or outdoors, this can increase your yield incredibly. All right, well, thank you for joining me in the Crop King Tomato Greenhouse to explore all the things you can grow hydroponically. This is what's cool about hydroponics, and this is why I love having it in my school. You can try anything. You don't have to, you're not dependent on the growing season. You can try just throwing seeds in and see what happens. You'd be amazed in the different things you can grow hydroponically and just how well it does regardless of the season. I've done sunflowers, I've done peppers, cabbage. I mean, the list goes on and on, and that's part of the fun is planting a seed and see what you can do with it hydroponically. Friends, go out there, explore. Hi, Jimmy. And do your thing hydroponically. Nothing's holding you back. Hope you enjoyed this.